This show is brought to you by listeners like you. Support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. I'm hungry, swung, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail for the set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the fly. Indie Mayhem Show, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, the show where we talk about indie wrestling and love of it and, 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 and talking with some of the guys in the business doing some really awesome things. Great slew of interviews lately. You can check them all out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show or the Wrestling Mayhem Show Superfood on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, or the video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and Facebook page and also keep an eye on the facebook page because we do events and we do live streams whenever we do get an interview that we can do like here in the studio at mayhem studios here in pittsburgh pa or of course uh uh, streaming and and having people coming over uh whether it be telephone google hangout all kinds of fun stuff like that so go check that out we've got a great batch of interviews here to start the year and uh this week will be no different it could be a an interview of the year candidate by the end of it Ah, you'll oh. see why in a moment. Um, of course, and please drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0 or goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Let us know your thoughts on uh, uh, the show, um, people you think we should interview. We are reaching out to a lot of people that were suggested to us lately, uh, and, and you're definitely going to see some of them here coming up on the show. And we've had a lot of recommendations like Kennedy Brink that was on here a few weeks ago as well uh or let us know uh questions if we have announced any interviews upcoming and we'll get those in the uh in the rundown as well this week here live here on a tuesday night is the iwc international wrestling cartel wrestler rookie rookie wrestler yeah sure rookie Something of the like year yeah. and and he, look, show the people the shirt on the video oh, there you yeah. gotta i mean he's got a shirt for it it's official guys yeah. Th- this shirt was actually a, a splendid gift from R.C. Dupree and Jack Pollock. I appreciate my Team Storm Brotherhood for gifting me with this That's amazing right. piece of uh, wardrobe here. Jackson Argus joining him, joining us here, part of uh, Team Canada in, a, in IWC. And by the way, I got, we got to point out, uh, he, in full Team Canada mode, brought the Tim Hortons in. I did. I mean, that's the, you got to have your caffeine fix. I mean... I got to be awake. It's it's a long, long way home for me, so I figured I should try to stay awake. You know, in Calgary. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's Alberta, Canada. I appreciate the dramatic <laughs> pause. I really do appreciate that. Nod. I think any wrestling <laughs> fan, it's ingrained at this point, right? Like absolutely. any long time wrestling. Yeah, fan, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that kind of shows your age, you know. Uh, at least. You call so. me old. No, I mean, not she's... you. You were around <laughs> it, so we'll get into yeah. that. Uh, I think that's just how that. That's just the, the the town song. But anyways, so we like to start off first a little get to know you question. Um, what is your earliest memory of getting into like of pro wrestling? Mm-hmm. What kind of hooked you or anything like that? I would my earliest memory. I, I was just a wee little tyke. Uh, I remember I was about seven years old, and my father got me into wrestling. He was out of it for a while, and I remember him getting a phone call from a friend of his saying that uh, Hulk Hogan was doing some bad things. And he was in WCW doing some really nasty things to people. And that surprised my father, who had taken his vitamins for so many years. So that pulled him back into watching. And then when I walked in and saw what he was watching, I saw a a ring with ropes and thought it was boxing. And when people were talking instead of fighting, I was confused. But it it sucked me in immediately. And uh, so I guess... I owe the NWO uh, for my interest in wrestling, as do many other people out there. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. A lot of people coming back to wrestling around that time. Yeah, absolutely. It was like the hottest time for anyone to be a wrestling fan. Back when uh, T-shirt sales were at an all-time high, posters mm-hmm. were on the wall and everything, and it, it was a great time, and I've been hooked ever since. So so yeah. from there, you know, it watched wrestling, getting kind of hooked mm-hmm. on it. Where did you take the leap from, I want to, you know, I'm into this stuff to, mm-hmm. I want to definitely get in the ring? It wasn't all that long ago. I was at a point in my life where I really needed new challenges. I needed to do things that I loved. And I, I know it sounds cliche to say, I wanted to wake up every morning and love my job. Mm-hmm. But I really did want to wake up every single morning and have the sense of excitement to go to work and do what I what I do now. And when I saw myself waking up and just going through the routine and just kind of, you know, all right, here's my day. It's another Monday. Let's get through this. Let's get my paycheck, blah, blah, blah. Once I felt myself doing that, I thought this is not what I need to be doing. And, and I saw myself getting out of shape and I 
saw myself just kind of slumping back and getting comfortable. I wanted to find something where I could, you know, I had purpose to stay in shape and I had purpose to be out there and find something that I'm good at. So I really, I just, I literally packed my bags. I got in my car. Next thing I know, I'm in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And uh, now I'm, I'm here. So, you know, everything just kind of fell into place mm-hmm. and I'm going to keep this going as long as I can. So, so I want to talk a little bit about that story because we were talking about a little bit off air. Sure. And it's a pretty incredible story about how you went sure. from from the training into mm-hmm. the IWC almost immediately. Sure. Um, now, now the the Team Storm or you know the 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 Landstorm is it a Training Academy? I'm, I'm not I'm not familiar entirely with what all he's doing up there. Yeah, the Landstorm Wrestling Academy. It's anything and everything wrestling related. He will teach you in a three to three and a half month span. And and I tell everybody because some people think that I'm I'm kidding. It's a full time job. I mean, you go up there and it's you wake up in the morning and I, I would wake up. I eat my breakfast. I went to the ring and I was there until three or four o'clock every day. After that, I would hit the gym and after the gym, I'd get in my my running outside and then I came home. I reviewed some tape and I went to bed. So it wasn't <clears throat> you know the vacation that some people think. It was a five day a week thing. The only day we had off was for Canada Day. That was the only day that we did not train. And we had a nice little picnic and we had ourselves some Molson and we and kicked back and then we enjoyed our time. But yeah, it's it's a full-time job and that's why it's such a some people think it's fast tracking to only be there for three and a half months. But mm-hmm. to see the hours and the time you're putting in, it's a lot of work. But it doesn't feel like work because you're having so much damn fun. Mm-hmm. So and yeah. it seems like it's a, a little different vibe because, you know, you, you hear about the wrestling schools are like, yeah, I was training for a year, sometimes two years before ever yeah. seeing a match. Uh, you know, how many kids drop out and stuff. Sure. Is, is this something where you had no training before this? No. Uh, actually, oddly enough, I'd gone to a few shows, but when class started uh, May 1st was the first time I'd ever set foot in a wrestling ring. And I finished training. I hope I have my dates right here. July 22nd. And I was already booked and had my first match in Calgary on July 23rd. So mm-hmm. I started almost immediately and haven't stopped since. That's great. So, yeah. So so you you had your first match. Um, we got it right here. Thanks to uh, our friends at IndieWrestlingLife.com for posting this. Uh, but uh, you, you you had your first match and you, you said right after training, right? Yeah. This was literally the day after my training was done. And I had what I, I like to say was a pretty good match. Everyone looks back at their first match with usually a, a cringe and, and a side eyed view. But I, I had I still look back at it and I enjoyed it aside from getting kicked in the mouth and in the face several times. I mean, <laughs> you know, the guy I, I wrestled was a quick little lad, Antonio Adamo, who is now in Montpellier, France. A great guy, great in the ring technician. But yeah, I, I look back at my first match and I enjoyed it because it was uh like I said, it was literally right after I got, tra- we got, we actually finished training on Friday. And I remember Lance telling us, good luck, you know, get out there and find some work. And I went over and I said, oh, thanks. I appreciate it. I have a match tomorrow. And he went, oh, okay, well have fun. Good luck. You know? So it was, <laughs> it, it just went right from there. And I, like I said, I haven't slowed down since. And, and from there, like this, this is what landed you in IWC. Yes. I, I showed up actually. Oh my, I'm trying to think. I don't know my dates off the top of my head, but I had that match, and I want to say it was two weeks later, I, I believe. Two or two and a half weeks later, I showed up in Rural Valley with R.C. Dupree, and we made an instant impact in IWC from there, and we just, again, didn't stop. We haven't stopped. We show up whether people want us to or not. Mm-hmm. We find our way to sneak into the backstage area. <clears throat> we weren't necessarily invited to House of Hardcore, but we showed up, and, uh, you know, we bugged nick lendl quite a bit that evening but i mean that's his fault for having a microphone in his hand so you know of course yeah of course (laughs) i think the royal valley was uh september 17th of 2016 yeah so that wasn't far off Mm because it was it took to drive from calgary back i mean it took me about it was about a week i stopped and, and saw some friends in chicago and in cleveland along the way back so by the time i got back it was only about like i said two or three weeks or so and the next thing i know i'm in I'm part of the IWC universe, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. So, and it's I, I don't plan on leaving anytime after signing full time contracts. I don't think you guys could get rid of me. So, <laughs> what are you gonna do? And, so it, it is interesting. Um, so you've actually not had a singles match yet. 
which, I don't which means I mean, we can talk about that, but which means that technically in 2016, I was never defeated in a singles you know competition absolutely correct technically absolutely. technically correct. and but singles uh in tag team matches or multi-man matches mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be uh still rookie of the year rookie of the year i know that's that was one of the things a lot of people wanted to hear my credentials and i guess we could run through that like you mentioned i've never been defeated in a single one-on-one match mm-hmm. i've never tapped out I've never been pinned in a single one-on-one match. I'm technically also undefeated in ladder matches. So that is a huge mark, you know, when you think of rookie of the year. So moving ahead, I think looking at credentials like that, I, I am definitely worthy of wearing the shirt and, and holding the name of rookie of the year. I think so. Excellent. Yeah. Um, and, and it's really cool to kind of get guys like early on like this, like sure. like you are. I mean, how many sure. matches do you even have on your belt, like officially out of out of out of training? Officially out of training, uh, I guess technically fifteen or sixteen, something along those lines. In like in like what six months? J- under six months. Yeah, we're actually creeping up. What's today's date? I think the seventeenth. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're creeping up about a week away from exactly six months since I finished training. So. Wow. Yeah, we're creeping up on that. So, I mean, I, I've been trying to work as hard as I can. It's just, you know, the whole, hey, put me on your show. Mm, how many matches do you have? Mm, a couple. When did you finish training? Uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Next. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, go do something else. But I've, I've been lucky enough that most places I just run my mouth until the person says, oh, my God, just let him go get beat up. I don't care. And, and that's fine by me if someone wants to try and, you know, beat me up. So, so, so booking by pestering. Kind of. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm not suggesting everyone. Do, I know a lot of promoters are probably hearing that going, oh, my God, we're going to have so many young guys pestering us now. That's what Jackson Argos did. Uh, no, no. You've got to bring a lot more to the table than just running your mouth, even though that's something I'm, I'm good at doing as well. But, oh, that's that's gorgeous. Look at that guy on the screen. <laughs> but, yeah. There you go. Some online promos there. Yeah, absolutely. There's so. some videos of me doing some beating up. That's fantastic. There For people that don't believe I can, we have a little bit of footage there. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, but like I said, so and again, uh, being under six months and already doing a ladder match. Yeah, that was great. Uh, that I mean, the idea was pitched by me to do it. So it was one of those situations where it was, you know, I pitched the idea and the challenge is accepted. And then it's like, OK, it's go time. And then you stop and look in the mirror and think, hey, buddy, this was this was your idea. And, and I spent a lot of times having, you know, romantic conversations with ladders just discussing with them to please not hurt me. And regardless, I woke up the next morning and just thought, oh my God, this was, I believe there's a picture on Instagram actually of me laying on my couch after that match covered in ice packs. And that was literally me laying around the house in ice packs the next day. Cause that was, that was a lot of fun. One of the, one of those pieces of advice I definitely uh, wish I'd listened to. And Lance said, you know, don't go out there and do stupid stuff. Don't jump, you know, the gun and just do stupid things. And I went, Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Two months later, how about a ladder match? And they went, all right. I guess I probably should have listened, but you know, what are um, you gonna do? It, it's it, it, so Lance Storm. I, you know, I, I think a lot of people have since are very familiar with you know his ECW days, of course, sure. WCW, WWE, um, and and being kind of a low key guy a little sure. bit. Uh, how does that come off in in training? Lance has. <sighs> If the Sahara Desert had a sense of humor, that Lance is the driest of dry when it comes to his humor. Mm -hmm. But it is one of those times where when he finally does crack a joke, it's just it's the one line little zinger that just makes the whole room go, God, that was good. That was good. Mm -hmm. But when it goes in the training, it's if I can do my best impression, Lance would always say to us, you know, we would do a drill. And when you were done and you would do your rep, he would say, go away. And we, you know, kind of look at him and he'd say, you know, I was always told, you know, don't go away angry, just go away. So that was kind of his way of, okay, you did it correctly. You don't need to do it again. So literally you would do a drill and it was never a matter of how was that? Good job. No, you would do the drill and he would say, go away. That was it. So it sounds like it was like the most low key. Like, I mean, I mean, again, a lot of us have seen like things like breaking ground or, or other sure. training videos where you know, I think people are getting yelled at and sworn at and everything like that. No, so we, this is very just yeah, like, there was never any yelling or screaming because it yeah. was, you know, it, it, I mean, if there was a situation where someone was told to do something and they deliberately didn't do it, 
that's one thing. But if you're trying and failing, it's trying and failing. It's not just saying, ah, I don't feel like doing it. Mm-hmm. So we we had somewhere it would be, you know, go away, go away, stop, do that again, mm-hmm. stop, do that again. Okay, go away. You know, there was that was about I mean, I never saw him angry. Mm-hmm. You know, he'd been he's been training for so long that he understands the mental block that can be there with some people. Even on the first day, people learning how to, uh, you know, people falling incorrectly. And it was, you know, never any frustration. It was, he, he's a teacher in every sense of the word. You know, no one would open, you know, an academy with the intention of, oh, I'm going to teach. No, it was, I'm opening this so I can teach. He has such a strong respect for the business that it's, if you're going to get trained, get trained properly. Mm-hmm. Learn how to do this the right way. And that was, to me, it was, it was the best experience. And I don't think there's any... Any academy out there like it, and I don't think there ever will be because his knowledge and his respect for the business is just untouched. Awesome. Yeah. We do have a question. Sure. From the chat room. Oh, boy. Our friend Britt would like to know who your favorite IWC female wrestler is. Our friend Britt. Hmm. My favorite IWC female. Oh. I mean, obviously uh, Marty Bell, right? Off the top of my head, <laughs> now I would have to say it's Britt Baker would be my answer here, considering she is the biggest, the largest supporter of Team Storm. But um, I really can't think of anyone coming even in a close second because she's kind of it's, untouched. Is she secretly Canadian? I think she's secretly been applying. I think she's been looking to cross the border and possibly get some type of credential there. But. I don't know. I think that when you have a guy like myself and a guy like R.C. Dupree and a guy like Jack Pollock, who is an absolute stud muffin, I don't. Oh, my goodness. Am I allowed to answer phone calls while I'm while I'm on the air? Is that OK? <laughs> is she calling you? Because I'm getting like, a phone call from just, Britt Baker. Just, just hold it up to the, to yeah. the mic as, as close yeah, as you can. Yeah, that's possible. Put it on speaker. Uh, so everybody Hello? can hear. Hello. Well, how's it going, no, Britt? How are you? I, I'm so great. I just wanted to congratulate you on being rookie of the year my full endorsement team storm because they are in fact best we got the full endorsement if you couldn't hear that full endorsement for team storm from Britt baker and she's calling to congratulate me publicly for winning rookie of the year Britt, you know i i truly appreciate you calling i really do no you're the best no you're, you're the, the best, best. No. no you're the best oh we could go back and forth all night with this you just did. Absolutely. Hello. He's... <laughs> All right. Keep, keep up the great work. I'm going to let you go now. I will do that. Thank you so much for calling. All right. Later, Gator. Later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the most popular I've ever felt in my entire life. Believe it or not. Breaking records on the live stream, too, from the looks of things, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, all right. Uh, a couple questions to wrap up here. First of all. Sure. Uh, I mean, obviously, again, it's because you're a fan of wrestling. Mm-hmm. What are you watching these days? What do you get time to watch these days? Oh. Or, or even what's got your attention? You're catching something on YouTube. Who's yeah. out there catching your attention? Well, uh, let's see here. I've, I've been directed by the stud, as I've been calling him, Jack Pollock. I've been watching a lot of Jack Pollock's old stuff. But no, I, I've been uh, I've been catching up on a lot of um, some Ring of Honor stuff. I've been watch I've been trying to catch up on NXT. I love NXT. It's been so. It sounds like I'm kidding, but it's been so hard to follow everything. I have been so busy, and it's sometimes I'll download stuff and I'll play it on my laptop while I'm driving. So I don't even really get to watch. I get to kind of listen, and it's it is so hard to keep up with everything. I YouTube a lot. I see a lot of highlights, and it's it's sad because I've I've become kind of a uh, a researcher more than more than a viewer these days. I'll be watching a match and I say, "Oh, I could I could do that," and I write things mm-hmm. down. So by the time the match is over, I don't even realize if it was a good match or not because I'm too busy taking notes, writing down whether or not I could do and try these things. So I'm watching anything that's available to me. A lot of people DM me videos and say, "Hey, you should try this. Hey, you should try to learn this stuff like that." So it's a lot of a lot of um, old Chris Larusso stuff is my favorite as well. I, I will put that name out there gladly and happily. So there you go. Right. yeah. Friend of the show. And also, uh, of course, you're a little short in, in your career so far. Sure. But what is the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling for you so far? Oh, shoot. We'll have to bring you back in a year and ask you again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me think here. The worst, I've, I've said this before, actually. The worst for me has been I went from having a ring at my disposal five days a week. And now I don't. I don't have, you know, I have some days where I, I, I don't even get in a ring. 
So it's, it's being able to train and learn things. And I, I might look and have to write a list and it sucks because I can't hurry and go try it right then and there. I got to wait for a day that a ring's available or I show up to a show four or five hour early just so I can try something. That's the worst part of it is finding a ring to get into. Uh, the best part, working with Jack Pollock and RC Dupree, <laughs> the, uh, the best part is probably just the creative freedom that I have. I've been lucky enough that I have a million million ideas running through my head daily. And luckily, a lot of places I've worked have seen that and said, you know what, here's the ball, run with it. So I think that it's the fact that it's an ex insanely creative outlet for me. I, I would say that's the best part about it. We do have another question from the chat room. Uh, Jackson from Melody. Sure. Uh, can you please bring out your weirdness before you go? Bring out my weirdness. That's not before. like code for something I can't put on the internet, is it? I, I don't know. I I mean, people want to I've mentioned before I'm very weird, but I don't know how I can bring that out. Should I tell people the weird things I'm interested in? I'm a huge Godzilla fan. I have two pet guinea pigs. I mean, I don't know how weird I can be. I mean, I look at me. I'm a weird looking guy. That's that's not enough weirdness that I can think of. Yeah. I don't know. Did I make a weird face or something? There you go. Yeah, that works, I go. guess. Have at it. Sure. All righty. Well, uh, where can people find you online? The best place to find me online would be on my Twitter, my Instagram, or on Facebook, at Jackson Argos. And the other places to find me would be at your local Tim Hortons or at your local wrestling show. Those are the places I spend most of my time. So That's great. How, yeah. How I, I'm actually, if I can plug this, I'm holding a contest on Instagram right now. I have a photo that is up. All you got to do is like the photo, tag two of your friends in the comment section, and you'll I'll be randomly picking people to send some t-shirts and some signed photos to. So. How long are you running that? Because uh, depending on when we post this. 24 hours. I'll be running that for 24, 24 hours. 24 hours. So if you're yeah. catching it live, that's why that's why when you see the events over on the Facebook sure. page, yeah. you can join us here live whenever these interviews are. It's running yeah. right now. Absolutely. So there you go. 24 hours of Argos. What is your Instagram? My Instagram handle is at Jackson, J-A-X-O-N. Argos, A R G O S. Probably a good name. Probably a good question. Yeah. Where did that name come from? Well, that's my name. Oh. <laughs> that is my name. That's the thing. If we want to talk about the other names, is I it have, Canadian? I have, is it? Let's talk about some of the other names I go by. I've been called the real deal of sex appeal. I've been called the hot rod with a dad bod. I've been called the Calgary kid. I've been called all kinds of stuff. Those are the names that we need to focus on, okay. people. I've also been called Rookie of the Year. There's a great name for me. There you go. Yeah. That'll be his nickname for the next uh, at least six months. Yeah, absolutely. And that's going to be my name forever. I, I might try and win it again next year. We'll see what happens. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Jackson Argus, for joining us here. Uh, of course, check him out. Of course, look him up on YouTube. Great interview also at IndieWrestlingLife.com if you want to find out more that we didn't get to here. Like... What are your signature moves? We'll leave that for that oh. website. They got this. They got the scoop on that one right yeah. there, right? Uh, and also uh, check out uh, International Wrestling Cartel and see him in action. Available uh, digital downloads on Smart Mark Video uh, and DVDs on IndieWrestling.us. And maybe by the time that this is out, uh, the digital downloads will also be back on IndieWrestling.us. So go check that out. Support Indie Wrestling. Support Jackson Argus. Yeah, support Jackson. I mean, support me. I got. I, I need all the support I can get. Sheesh. There Be a go. good bra. Support me. Jeez. Uh, was, that a, was that a bad joke? That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Is that one of Lance's? No, that's one of mine. Okay. He would deliver it much better. I'll, I'll admit that. Much. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> Is that the weirdness we're talking about? That, yeah, that my, my terrible it. jokes that I, I make. It's come back around. I'm funny. And so, support us over at patreon.clam.com. Wow. So see if that's a domain that I can get. By People the way. usually get rattled around me. I understand. You're yeah. probably just Rest trem trembling with excitement. Patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show if you like this stuff and want to support it. Become a fan of the show, a supporter of the show. We have plenty of levels over there that I have not memorized just yet. Uh, thank you again. Support Indie Wrestling. We'll see you next time. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.